If you're planning to move to Qatar and already packing your bags up, this is the most important video you'd like to watch. Today we will discuss how much does it cost to live in Doha, Qatar, uh, what are the different expenses such as rents, food, utilities, transportation, education, uh, and so on. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll provide you um, a, a summary of all expenses which will help you in your monthly budget plan. Qatar is one of the most exciting places to live in the Middle East. With one of the highest GDP per capita, it is also ranked as one of the most peaceful places to live in the MENA region by the Global Peace Index recently. No income tax, best telecom 5G services in the region with a world-class healthcare and education system. Please do note that this video was made in August 2022 uh, and prices may vary depending on uh, when you watch this video. So let's uh, let's dig straight in. So the first topic were well, one of the most important ones is uh, accommodation. Without a doubt, accommodation will be the biggest expense that you'll have in Qatar. Uh, some employers are offering um, housing and in, in your salary packages, so you will not need to worry about that. Um, but if they don't, then you'll need to search for your preferred location, uh, depending on where you uh, work uh, or where your kids schools are so Doha is, uh, is is a small city and even if you drive from one end to the other it might just take you approximately 30 to 35 minutes max property finder is a popular online portal that expats use to find accommodation the numerous options available ranging from studios apartments villas uh, etc um, but if you're looking in pristine areas such as the Pearl, Meshara, Zen Marina, uh, a studio would cost you somewhere around six to seven thousand. Uh, a two bedroom would be around thirteen to fifteen thousand, uh, and a three bedroom would approximately in today's day and age would be around eighteen thousand plus. As rents have recently increased uh, because of the FIFA World Cup approaching. For cheaper options, I would recommend you to explore areas such as Najma, Mansura, Bin Umran, right in the heart of the city, or search in outskirts like Wakara, for example, where a normal studio would probably cost you around 2,500 to 3,000, a two bedroom for 6,000, um, and a three bedroom around 7 to 9,000 with a maid's room. In Doha, what you will notice is mostly you'll find fully furnished um, options available. Um, but do look for good deals. Developers usually offer uh, really good deals like one month free rent or utilities included if you do a long term uh, tenancy commitment. But do check out my recent uh, video on uh, rent prices uh, as they expected to go down in early 2023 after the World Cup gets over. Um, I'll put a link in the, in the description below for you to, to click through. Okay, so let's talk about transport now. Qatar has uh, various transportation options available with uh, local buses, taxi service like Karva, ride hailing apps like Uber and Kareem, uh, and a locally uh, Qatari local one ride, and also the very popular uh, Doha metro network. The network is, ex is extensive network, which covers mostly all the popular areas of Doha um, and is always ever expanding. Uh, a standard single journey pass would cost you around two reals, regardless of how far you're going. If you talk about taxis and ride hailing apps, uh, they start from around eight to ten reals, quite reasonably priced if you compare to other cities in the region like Dubai, which is um, considered extremely expensive. Um, for example, let me give an example: a ride if you take from the Lazel city to somewhere in the city center of Doha. Would approximately cost you maybe 20 25 reals which is quite reasonable obviously depending on on the location how far you go this could this could vary renting a car is quite easy in doha once you've arrived and secured a driving license if you're coming from the uk etc it could be easily converted or else you have to apply for a new one uh, a normal sedan if you were to rent probably would cost you around something between 1000 1300 400 depending on how long you go uh, the take take the contract for so if you're taking a contract for like for example 1000 uh, for six months it could probably cost you just 1000 
Fuel prices are quite low compared to other parts of the world. If you rent a normal sedan and drive it for a month, like back and forth to your office or work or dropping kids to school, probably would be around five, six hundred riyals a month. Okay, so let's look into utilities. Qatar has one electricity and water provider called Kaharma. For gas, most areas use cylinders and residential LPG provided by a company called Bukut. Um, you can easily purchase them for your nearest supermarket or petrol station. Um, Redu and Vodafone are the two primary telco providers in Qatar. Um, both providers have excellent prepaid and postpaid plans available to customers. Um, they also have internet connections uh, with various benefits such as the inclusion of uh, landline services. So for mobile, um, obviously depending on your usage, uh, monthly charges would be around 80 to 100 rials a month. Uh, for home internet, including your, your TV connection, a uh, starting package of 20 Mbps could cost you around 300 to 350 rials. Now on to uh, exciting bits such as entertainment. There are numerous things to do in Doha. With FIFA approaching, there are numerous theme parks, hotels and entertainment areas opening up for families to enjoy. And there are a few things to do in Doha. Some are free to do while some activities will be paid. It all depends on the type of activity that you'll be taking upon. Um, but many of the theme parks would be ranging between average 200 to 250 per person. Um, with regards to eating out, cheaper options are available than the main chain eateries uh, and the posh fine dining restaurants. You can also order in using uh, popular food delivery apps such as uh, Tanaba, Rafiq or Sununu. Uh, I would say a meal in a fast food restaurant would probably cost you around 13 to 15 rials, while high-end restaurants can go up to even 80 to 100 rials per person. Yeah, so there, there are cheaper options available that if you, you know, walk along the streets of Doha, you'll find restaurants offering you meals for as low as 10 to 15 rials but they're not really in a, in, inside malls they're they are along the streets of, of, of the world. probably the most interesting part for women groceries um there are many supermarkets in qatar where you can find uh, local and imported food products uh, some markets are even catering to specific nationalities when purchasing uh, groceries from supermarkets um, Please note that there would be locally sourced products available which are cheaper. They, have, they are labeled made in Qatar, so look out for those. I would say roughly around 10% of your salary would be going into groceries, depending on the size of your family, of course. But um, if you're, for example, a family of three, then you will be spending around 1,000 to 1,500. So roughly 500 per person is what you should set aside for, for groceries. Qatar has a world-class education system. So if you have kids, please make sure that you negotiate or check with the employer if they offer uh, school fees reimbursements in your salary packages. Many employers do, uh, or else you'll have to obviously save up for, for fees, uh, which is quite a big chunk of your salary. There are specific schools for different nationalities, uh, and they are obviously the private international schools. However, the prices of these international schools are higher and may vary depending on the grade that your, your kid is joining in. International schools, the yearly tuition fees would probably, you know, base would start from 20,000 for primary students and 80,000 max up to secondary. So that's really the ceiling. Uh, on the other hand, local nationality schools would offer a yearly tuition of five to 6,000, very reasonable for primary students or uh, 12 to 13,000 for senior high school students. Do factor in transportation fees as well, which would probably be around 800 to 1,000 per child per month. Alongside that, healthcare, as I said, world-class healthcare being offered in, in, in Doha. Fortunately, citizens and residents of Qatar are eligible for Qatar's free uh, or subsidized public healthcare services. Uh, Hamad Health Card, uh, provides these services at the uh, Hamad Medical Corporation or PHCC centers. To utilize this, what you need to do is you need to apply for a health card, which costs around 100 uh, per person. But there, but there are private hospitals that you could visit for your medical concerns. And private healthcare facilities, uh, a normal you know consultation with the GP would cost you around 50 rials. You go 
up, it could go up to right up to three to four hundred depending on, on the concern. Uh, if you have health insurance available, in great. You can get those services at a lower price. Um, but make sure to check with the employer about the health insurance, as some employers do offer that as part, as part of your uh, part of your package. So finally, guys, I wanted to give you um, a chart view of the total expense. Um, Please consider it as bare minimum, and of course, there's no upper limit depending on how much you earn and what your salary packages are. To give you a rough idea, normal accommodation in a two-bedroom city area would be five thousand. Uh, utilities, including electricity, gas, mobile, and internet, would probably be a thousand. Um, school fees would probably for two children be five thousand. Groceries would probably be two thousand. Um, renting a car, um, 1,200, uh, and miscellaneous, always keep in mind miscellaneous, 1,000 for laundry, cleaning, etc. So that takes you up to right 17,000 a month. So something I wanted to mention to you that if you're planning to bring in your family, make sure that your salary is 10,000 or equivalent to 10,000 with this with the accommodation offered. So please check immigration policies before you, you sponsor. And that's it guys, all, you know, I'd like to say although living in Qatar is cheaper than many several Western countries, your overall living expenses really depends on your lifestyle. You know, uh, when, when calculating this, make sure that you factor in all your shopping habits, your miscellaneous expenditures, extracurricular activities, your hobbies. So make sure that you, you calculate those when making your monthly budget planning. So yeah, let me know if you guys are excited of coming and living in Qatar. What are your plans? Do you think I've missed out something which is crucially important for uh, factoring in the cost of living expenses? Please do let me know um, and I'll uh, look forward to seeing you in the next videos. Thank you very much.